What's going on YouTube? I gotta deliver some softwood. I'm finally getting rid of my softwood. I just did a load the other day, face cord, and a friend of mine, he said he wants 200 bucks worth of wood, which is about 150 Canadian. So I guess that's over a face cord. Yeah, it's significantly over a face cord. So it's gonna be at least these three crates at the top. And then maybe a little bit more from, I don't know, I guess maybe I'll take from this one. So let's get loaded up. All right, well, it looked like a lot of wood in there while it was up there. But obviously, because this side is close to the uh, crates, it's not very full on this side. So I'm just gonna pull a bunch out of this crate here. Hopefully I can sell the rest. Hopefully even this week, maybe you get some people last minute, they want some wood for Christmas. And they might get turned off when I tell them I got pine and spruce, but hey, maybe they'll enjoy that smell for the Christmas season, you know? They'll just say whatever, just give me some wood. One thing about people in the city, as much as they don't know anything about wood, they know they need hardwood. I'll give them that. Can they tell the difference? No, they can't tell the difference until they're actually burning it. But at least they know to uh, request it. And of course, like I said, you know, once they get it in the stove and it burns quick, then they'll have a good idea of whether it is or not, right? But it's so funny because everybody who calls me says they got ripped off. And I'm not surprised. Because, you know, we're in the city, people don't care about wood that much. It's not valued for heat. You have tons of tree cutters here. It's expensive to live here, so you have people trying to find ways to make money. And I believe that a lot of people who sell wood, they're like, you know, they say they cut it in May or June. They're like, oh yeah, it should be ready by now. And then they just go and sell it, right? Of course, there's the people who just flat out don't care. And they're going to sell it anyway. I was just talking to a guy who is uh, just outside of the city, north of the uh, west side of the city. Busy area for firewood. He says he's doing like crazy for um, summertime sales. I said, I'm never doing any summertime sales, like hardly at all. But he said when he started, he just figured you, you cut the wood and you split it and then you get it sold, right? So he had his own learning curve, you know? I'll probably end up going to see him sometime. I tend to travel up that way a bit. Not as much as I used to, but that's up the way going up to uh, Muskoka, up uh, Highway 400, which is a heavily trafficked uh, highway. So the highway goes up from the city's west end And it goes right into the town of Barrie, which is the west end of Lake, um, Lake Simcoe. It's right at the tip. There's a, a bay that tapers until it's a small area. It's still big overall, but I mean, it's a, it's a huge lake. And then this whole section, it just tapers. And then you have Barrie on the edge of the, um, of the, the lake. So it's a lot of people going up there. Then of course the cottagers are Muskoka, but tons of people live up in Barrie and that surrounding area and they work in Toronto so the commute is ridiculous and now they're actually um they're widening the highways for once because once you got past like the suburbs of um above Toronto then it was just three lanes all the way but the problem with what they're doing when they're um widening the roads is they're putting in HOV lanes and they're not helping much because they're pretty much empty and then the people who use them there are people who, I'm not saying you should speed in the HOV lane, but it's people who are doing like 100, right? And when the traffic's so busy, the rush hour, even that lane's backed up, right? They should just have that lane open. And then you have, of course, when there's nobody on the road and they still go in the HOV and they think it's going to get them faster. But I believe that's like some people who have the mentality that, you know, if they take the express lanes all the time, it's just automatically going to get them there faster, right? 
I'm not going right to the $200 amount for the wood because some of that money's for delivery. Okay. Yeah, that's about it. Okay. All right, let's head to the delivery. All right, guys, kind of hard to see, but we'll see what happens when I check the footage in the editing board. came out nicely it helped that I was on a hill here I'm not done here yet though guys I gotta do a lower garbage here too so I'm just gonna pull up around the side of the garage here all right guys all done I got the garbage on so back to the city leaving the country so I just got to the wood yard and all I was gonna do is put on some bags of the cutoffs that I have in the container over here throw them in the truck because somebody wants to buy them it's a convenience store so another scrapper that I know he said okay well the guy will buy some bags so all right bring 10 back to the shop to see how it goes so I was thinking maybe I should split some wood but then I looked at the time and it was 20 to 7 and of course the next door neighbor he's going along with the city bylaw stuff where he wants a noise down after 7 o'clock right so I have like 15 minutes to split some of this white oak and the beast so let's do it
these 18 inch I did only two of those blocks were uh, 16 inch but you get a lot of these long ones that come off and I just use them for kindling at the shop so I got a pile over there and what I started doing a while back was leaving a garbage bin below the splitter and all this stuff jammed in here huh yeah, I started um, even bins at the end so that the chafe could just drop off into the bin instead of me having to clean up on the ground. And before I was doing a lot of um, picking out the kindling, I already had a bunch of kindling bags. I didn't really need to do more, but I did more just to reduce my waste. You know, have stuff that's still, you know, available for the market. There's a piece of metal in there. I don't know what that was. I saw it shining. But anyways, um, yeah, I have so much kindling now and I didn't really sell any and it's a good idea for me to keep these bins here and let all the chain fall into them so I don't have to clean it up off the floor especially in winter time it's hell with the snow and the ice to clean up all the stuff on the floor so I might as well just get it right into a bin and then it's ready for the burn barrel or disposal Actually, do I have anything to get rid of? Yeah, because I have a garbage load in the truck. So I could empty out the garbage that's in the can back there. There's not much in there. It's close to empty. But I might as well empty it out now. Even the chafe I could get rid of. I could just throw it right in the truck. So I'm going to do some stacking for now. And then I'm going to get those 10 bags of cutoffs on them. I was just thinking, you know, you guys see me not wanting certain woods certain times and everything like that, right? Well, here's another reason why I like diversifying the species. It's because stuff like honey locust and oak, they take forever to dry, right? So if I'm starting back there and I start crates like I have with the 14 inch, there's mostly honey locust and oak in there and it takes forever to dry. So I don't want the whole crate to be full of that stuff. Most of the honey locust and the oak will dry by the time next year comes around. But if the whole thing is there, then, you know, maybe half of that whole crate, I might have to throw into another crate or it's in the way because it's sitting there, right? So that's why I like to have species like sugar maple. Uh, ash is good because it dries quick. It's always alternating what I'm doing with the crates. It depends on the scenario. It depends on the wood that's coming in. It depends on what time of year it is when I'm splitting the wood. So, you know, right at the back, it's not the back crate, but it's the second row in. It's all honey locust and oak, right? So I really do want to put something else in there. So next year when I go to sell it, I'm not wasting my time, right? Throwing it somewhere else, you know? So I'm just going to put the cover back on the splitter and I'm going to head back to the shop. So thanks for watching, guys. Like, subscribe, share, comment, and all that good stuff.